Good day, good day, y'all. Today, uh, I wanted to do something a little different. I'm basically going to show you guys a proof uh, that I just thought would be interesting to show you guys, and I want y'all to see. Um, normally, I would have proven this in class, but I kind of figured that um, this could be something that was asynchronous. This is not going to be like my normal videos where I kind of edit it and such. And, uh, you know, I, you might hear from the microphone, but I'm kind of just using my headset microphone. Um, but basically, guys, I just want to show y'all a solution to a problem. And uh, y'all don't need to actually memorize this solution. I just think that it's very, I think it's beneficial to see the math proven because it kind of is like, it just shows you all the different features of math happening and interacting with each other in a really cool way which actually produces something useful like this this identity right it produces new information so right now what i'm doing is i'm, I'm drawing a kind of shitty but i'm drawing a unit circle right so i'm drawing the unit circle but i'm just drawing the first quadrant right so this is like zero comma one this is like one comma zero and what we're going to do is we're talking about what is the sign of two angles added. Uh, the angles I'm going to choose are going to be alpha, so that this symbol here that looks like a fish is called alpha. It's a Greek letter. Plus beta. This is just A and B in the Greek alphabet. It's kind of common in math to use. It's kind of common in math to use um, Greek letters for angles when we're talking about angles, just because it helps them like distinguish from other things like side lengths or other values like variables. So what we got to do is we got to first off draw two angles on here, which can add to each other to make alpha plus beta. So let's say that this angle, let's say that this big angle here, where uh, it goes from the origin, so this is O, it goes from the origin. Actually, you know what? I like. To, I want to call this A. A to B, we'll call it. All right. So this angle here is alpha plus beta. So it would make sense, therefore, that somewhere in between is the kind of cutoff where, you know, I have alpha is part of this, and then beta is the other part of the angle, and so then the whole thing is alpha plus beta. You see. And so. Um, you know, and that has some, these are, these are generic angles, so I don't know what their coordinates are, right? I just, all I know is that this radius here is one because it's the unit circle. So AB equals one. Let's write that down actually to keep note of it. All right, so now what we're going to do guys is I'm going to draw this diagram. And honestly, this diagram is, this is part of why this proof is challenging. This is a hard proof. In fact, it's probably one of the hardest trig identities to prove of the ones that we use in pre-calc. Um, and that's why I tend to prove it for my class. But I I don't want to just, I don't know. I, there's something about like just telling y'all the proof like or like what, what it's equal to and just having you accept that that I don't like. I, I'd rather show you guys why it's true. Why is it that sine of a alpha plus beta is equal to whatever it's equal to? Let's find out. So guys, what I'm doing is I'm gonna draw a right triangle and uh, this we'll call, we'll call this point here C. So check it out, triangle ABC is my right triangle from alpha plus beta. So what is the sine of alpha plus beta? Well, it's gonna be the opposite, which is you see this side length BC here over the hypotenuse, which is AB, but AB is one. Anything divided by one is just gonna be itself. So sine of alpha plus beta See, it's, it's BC over AB, which is one. So it's really just BC. I have to kind of zoom out a little bit because we're going to need more space here. Cool. Now, what I'm also going to do here, guys, is I'm going to draw another right triangle. And now the right triangle that I'm going to draw is going to be uh, the one for beta. Okay, so watch this, watch this. Uh, if I draw a line going from the hypotenuse of beta down to make a right angle you see we'll call this point here e i'm gonna i'm gonna have a d later but i i, I want to call this one e here for now so check it out do you see how a b e is the triangle for beta so um what i could notice is that actually uh for example the sine of beta 
is the opposite, which is BE, over the hypotenuse, which is AB, which is 1. So actually, BE there, BE there is going to be um, the sine of beta. This will be this will be very important for us in this proof later. What about the cosine of beta? What would be the cosine of beta? Well, the cosine of beta would be A E the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is once again one. So it'd be A E over one, which is once again just A E. Oh, I didn't mean to write sine beta here. I meant to write B E. Now, what I'm doing here, guys, is actually kind of a lot of prep work. I'm just kind of setting up things that I know. I know that sine of beta is BE, this side length here. I know that cosine of beta is AE, this side length here. That's going to prove useful for me in the future. Now, what else can we do here? Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, watch this. I know by geometry that this angle here and this angle here are congruent. Why do I know that those are congruent? Um, I know that because they are vertical angles, right? And um, so what's going to happen is uh, the, tr the, okay, so watch this. The angles of a triangle, alpha, this one here in the right angle, are all supposed to add up to 180, right? So alpha plus, we'll call this uh, x for now. Alpha plus x plus 90, because this is a right angle, 90, should equal 180, right? So what I can see is basically that um, like alpha and the, this missing angle here should add up to 90. This is a pretty typical idea in geometry of right angles. These are called complementary angles. What it basically is going to tell us is that, oh, okay, instead of calling this x, let's call this 90 minus alpha, right? Because see how like whatever alpha is, this is going to be 90 minus that because then uh, 90 minus alpha plus alpha is 90 plus 90 is 180. That makes this angle here 90 minus alpha. Now, if this angle here is 90 minus alpha, then what is this angle in this small triangle here? We'll call this um, we'll call this point like a G. So, what is the this angle here for uh, triangle BGE? This is alpha. Right by the same logic of why this one would be alpha and this one's 90 minus alpha, right? 90 minus alpha and alpha. So cool, that's gonna be useful for us. Okay. Now I'm gonna do something that's a little bit odd here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, turn this, bring this down as a right right angle. I'll call this F, and so now you can see that I have this triangle which is AEF um, for uh, alpha, right? Now, um, I'm going to also do one other thing that might seem weird. This is part of this like trick here is part of where like this proof is a little bit odd. But to check this one out, I'm going to actually create a rectangle. Right. Do you see how this is a rectangle here? And then this will be the last point that I'm adding. This is going to be D. And see, so see, if there's a rectangle, then that's a right angle, right? I guess I don't really need this right angle anymore. So check it out. Alpha is in the triangle B, D, E. It's also in the triangle A, E, F, right? So um, what we're going to do is this. I could, I can find, I, I think that I should elaborate where I'm going with this now. So why am I doing this? Why am I creating this, this uh, picture here? Well, it's because we want to know what the sine of alpha plus beta is, right? Alpha plus beta, or the sine of alpha plus beta is B, C. But I can't find B, C. I can, however, find the sum of its parts, uh, BD here, and then DC, because BC would be just those two side lengths added, right? Notice how BD plus DC would be the same thing as BC, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to try to actually calculate the side length of BD in terms of like sine and cosine of alpha and beta, all right? So in this little triangle here, uh, BD would be related. It's the adjacent. So I'm going to do cosine. So I want to know what's the cosine of alpha. Um, so let's go ahead and do that right down here. So the cosine of alpha is the adjacent, which is BD, divided by the hypotenuse, which is BE. 
Now, check this out, guys. If I want to know what BD is, I should probably multiply BE to the other side. So I would get that BD is equal to BE times the cosine of alpha. Now, but what is BE? BE, we showed earlier, is the same thing as sine of beta. So what we see here is that actually BD is equal to sine of beta times cosine of alpha. So we've already done half of our project here, half of our proof. Now what we're going to do, guys, is we got to calculate what is DC. Now this one's a little bit interesting. DC will equal EF here because this is a rectangle, right? And the side lengths across a rectangle are equal to each other. I can calculate EF though because, or I can figure out what EF is. Like I couldn't figure out DC here, but I can figure out EF because it's in this triangle with alpha. In fact, it's the opposite side. So I'm going to do sine. Check it out. I'm going to do the sine of alpha, and that'll equal the opposite, which is EF, over the hypotenuse, which is AE here. Y'all see where I'm going with this? AE was equal to cosine beta. So I can multiply cosine beta over, or AE over, I can multiply that over, and I would get that EF is AE uh, times sine of alpha, AE being cosine beta though. So EF is equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta. All right, so check it out guys. I've found EF, which is equivalent to DC, which I needed, and I've found BD. So in the end, what is the sine of alpha plus beta equal to? Well, BD, we said, was uh, sine, cosine of beta and alpha. So um, I'm actually going to swap these just because of the way that it's typically written. But so uh, DC is EF, which is sine, alpha, cosine, beta, plus BD, right, plus BD right here. What was BD? BD was sine, beta, cosine, alpha. And that's it. So in the end, I'm going to say there for my proof, I'm going to say therefore this, this three, this three um, dots set up like this is uh, very common to use in math. It, it's a symbol that means therefore. And people tend to use that when they're like concluding a proof. So therefore the sine of two angles, alpha plus beta should be equal to the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha, uh, not alpha, sorry, of beta times the cosine of alpha. And then um, when you conclude a proof in math, it's common to also use a filled in box. And this little filled in box essentially denotes um, that my proof is done. And that is the proof of the angle sum identity. It's it's commonly in math called actually the uh, the addition identities identity. Um, in this case, we did the addition identity for sine. And uh, so. I just wanted y'all to have seen this proof. I think it's I think it's um, I think it's just awesome to see the math done and like rather than just accept that the sine of two angles added equals this, uh, you guys have actually been proven why it's true. And so um, this whole video was something that I wanted everyone to see, and now I'm going to offer you guys an optional extra credit challenge now this is entirely optional um 
I don't require anyone to actually to, to do it. I don't require you to do it. But I think it'd be interesting to see if anyone can prove the cosine addition identity. It, the proof is very similar to this one. You would actually use the exact same diagram. You would use the same diagram as uh, the one I have drawn here. So you could, you could just use all of this diagram and all these ideas here to try to prove the cosine one. And so what, um, what I want y'all to see is that the cosine identity, cosine of alpha plus beta, notice that that would be, um, the cosine of alpha plus beta would be AC down here, right? That'd be AC. Now, um, I'll give you guys a little tip slash hint. This si side length here of AC is equivalent to the, the long side of AF minus the short side of CF. All right. So that's my hint to you guys. My other hint being this whole proof, it, um, pretty much any of the ideas used in this proof get used in the proof for cosine. Um, and when you have finally gotten the identity completed, you should get uh, that cosine of alpha plus beta is, you should be able to prove that cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. Once again, guys, this is an optional challenge, but I would be interested to see if anyone is, in, is gonna try and is able to prove this identity. Otherwise, y'all, the only homework I have for you guys this Wednesday is that I'd like y'all to make sure that you catch up on any work you have not completed yet in our class. Um, take advantage of this time to try to wrap up assignments so that we can conclude the quarter strong. Hope you all have a nice week. Bye-bye.